So today um, is, uh, there's many things that have happened on this day. And it's called, what is it called again? Akshaya? Akakshaya. Akak. Say, could you say again? Okay, Tirta. So, um, so it's a good day to uh, start a new project. Uh, <clears throat> like Prophet started the uh, um, League of Devotees on this day, and also Yasdev and Ganesh uh, started the uh, work on the Mahabharat with Yas speaking and Ganesh writing. There's a whole lot of things. So, so I'm, today's, I'm going to keep up with the Bhagavatam, it's a small purport. So we'll do a Bhagavatam with um, a few points, and then I'll mention some of the things that are um, relevant to today. Uh, <clears throat> so, I'll uh, try to squeeze it all in. Jaiyo Raja Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should first offer our respectful obeisances to the Supreme Personality of God, Lord Narayan, to Narayan Rishi, the Super Muslim being, Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, to Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and to Srila Prabhupada, our spiritual master. Nama Om Vishnu Bhadaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane. Namaste Sadasati Deve, Gauravani Pacharane, Nivesesha Sunivari Paskata Desadhar. So, text 39, am I correct? That's oh, correct. Okay. Yudhisthir Vacha, Yudhisthir Vacha, Naham, Naham, Veda, Veda, Gatim, Gatim, Pitro, Pitro, Naham, Veda, Gatim, Pitro, Naham, Veda, Gatim, Pitro, Bhagavan, Bhagavan, Va, Va, Gata, Gata, Gita, Gita, Bhagavan, Va, Gata, Gita, Bhagavan, Va, Gata, Gita, Amba, Amba, Va, Va, Hatta, Hatta, Putrata, Putrata, Amba, Va, Hatta, Putrata, Amba, Va, Hatta, Putrata, Va, Va, Gata, Gita, Cha, Cha. Tapasvini, Tapasvini, Vakata cha tapasvini, Vakata cha tapasvini, Yudhisthir vacha, Yudhisthir vacha, Naham vira gatim pitro, Naham vira gatim pitro, Bhagavan kvakata vita, Bhagavan kvakata vita, Ambhava hatta putrata, Ambhava putrata, Vakata cha tapasvini, Vakata cha tapasvini, Yudhisthir vacha, Yudhisthir vacha, Naham vid, Naham vid akatim pitro, Naham vid akatim pitro, Bhagavan kvakata vita, Bhagavan kvakata vita, Ambhava hatta putrata, Ambhava hatta putrata, Vakata cha tapasvini, Vakata cha tapasvini, Naham Virgatim Pitro, Naham Virgatim Pitro, Bhagavan Kvakata Vitaha, Bhagavan Kvakata Vitaha, Mbhava Hatta Putrata, Mbhava Hatta Putrata, Kvakata Tapasvini, Kvakata Tapasvini, Yudhisthir Vacha, Yudhisthir Vacha, Naham Veda Gatim Pitro, Naham Veda Gatim Pitro, Bhagavan Kvagata Vita, Bhagavan Kvagata Vita, Ambhava Hatha Putrata, Ambhava Hatha Putrata, Kvagata Chata Pasini, Kvagata Chata Pasini, Yudhisthir Vacha, Yudhisthir Vacha, Naham Veda Katim Pitro, Naham Veda Katim Pitro, Bhagavan Kvakita Vitaha, Bhagavan Kvakita Vitaha, Ambhava Hatha Putrata, Ambhava Hatha Putrata, Kvakita Chata Pastini, Kvakita Chata Pastini, Yudhishthira Vacha, Yudhishthira Vacha, Naham Veda Katim Pitro, Naam Veda Gati Mitro Bhagavan Kvagata Vita Bhagavan Kvagata Vita Ambhava Hatha Putrata Ambhava Hatha Putrata Kvagata Cha Tapasvini Kvagata Cha Tapasvini Ladies Oh, 
Yudhisthira. Yudhisthira. Actually, it was Yudhisthira Vajra. Maharaj Yudhisthira said. Maharaj Yudhisthira said. Na. Na. Do not. Do not. Aham. Aham. Myself. Myself. Beta. Beta. Know it. Know it. Bitim. Gatim. Departure. Departure. Bitroa. Bitroa. Of the uncles. Of the uncles. Bhagavan. Bhagavan. Oh, godly personality. Oh, godly personality. Kva, kwa, where, where, the tau, the tau, gone, gone, itta, itta, from this place, from this place, amba, amba, mother ant, mother ant, ba, ba, either, either, hatha putra, hatha putra, bereft of her sons, bereft of her sons, orta, orta. Uh, aggrieved. Aggrieved. Kva. Kva. Where. Where. Ita. Ita. Gone. Gone. Cha. Cha. Also. 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 Tapasini. Tapasini. Ascetic. Ascetic. So I'll say, then you repeat. Maharaj Yudhisthira said. Maharaj Yudhisthira said. said. Oh godly personality. Oh godly, godly personality. I do not know. I do not know. know. Where my two uncles have gone. Where my two uncles have gone. And that, that's pertaining to Vidura and Indra Nor can I find. Nor, nor can, can I find my ascetic aunt. My ascetic aunt. Gandhari. Gandhari. Who is grief sick? By the loss of her sons. By the loss of her sons. Maharaj Yudhisthira mm -hmm. said, "Oh great godly personality, I do not know uh, where my two uncles have gone. Nor can I find my ascetic aunt." who was grief stricken by the loss of her sons. So he's speaking, the godly personality he's speaking about is uh, Narda, who just arrived. Um, he seems to come just in time. <laughs> um, so his Prabhupada's purport. Um, Maharaj Yudhisthira, as, as a good soul and devotee of the Lord, was always conscious of the great loss of his great aunt and her sufferings as an ascetic. An ascetic is never disturbed by all kinds of sufferings, and that makes him strong and determined on the path of spiritual progress. Queen Gandhari is a typical example of an ascetic because of her marvelous character in many trying situations. She was an ideal woman as mother, wife, and ascetic. In the history of the world, such character in a woman is rarely found. So Maharaj Yudhisthira said, O oh, godly personality, I do not know where my two uncles have gone, nor can I find my ascetic aunt who is grief stricken by the loss of her, all of her sons. I mean, actually, there's a lot of things to talk about with this. Uh, but because of the day, we'll, we'll, I'll just touch on a few things. I mean, I, one, one question I've had, and I don't have an answer for it, but it, Samjai was able to get spiritual TV. You know, he had that mystic power that now our um, technology, we're imitating the, uh, the mystic powers that great yogis have. And um, so he was able to, as you know, see what was going on. Dhritarashtra, <coughs> at the battle of Kurukshetra, he said, what did my sons and the sons of Pandu do? Uh, and so he was able to see that, but he couldn't see where uh, Gandhari and uh, Dhritarashtra and Vidura are gone. I found that interesting. But he lost that power after the battle of the Kuru. <clears throat> okay, that's the answer. Yeah, that was given by Sri Vyasadev specifically. Was given by, just for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that's the answer to that. Wow. So, um, so uh, as far as Mother Gandhari, the, her character, uh, that she's willing. We know that she, when she found out that her husband was blind, she immediately blindfolded herself, and um, she remained in that situation, that condition, for the entire uh, period of her, her <coughs> marriage with, to Dhritarashtra. And actually, she didn't really have to go and follow him, but that's the nature of a, a very dutiful um, wife. And it's very difficult for, like in the story of Prithu Maharaj, as described, his wife's name is Archie. She's an expansion of the goddess of fortune. Um, when it was time for him to renounce his kingdom, she, Archie, uh, went with him. And it says that she, had, she was um, 
used to living in the palace. She had never, her feet had never touched the ground. Even before she was married, she was uh, a princess. <clears throat> so she, uh, her, her body was very delicate and frail, but yet, and so it's difficult to go off into the, to the jungle, into uh, to the mountains, um, going north, I would assume it means going towards the Himalayas, um, that they, their bodies are, <clears throat> that they're, you know, she's touching the ground for the first time, experiencing all of these um, dangers and discomforts that they're not used to. So, but they do this out of loyalty to their, to their husband, which teaches real, uh, it, it's not just for uh, the chastity of a woman, this shows um, our, the chastity of a servant, in other words, a, a disciple, that we are willing to follow our spiritual master anywhere. Uh, and our whole point, the whole point of our philosophy, one devotee, uh, uh, one of the original devotees from 26 Second Avenue, he was part of what they used to call the Mott, Mott Street Gang, <laughs> or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, they, um, he asked Prabhupada after uh, several years, he wrote a letter saying, Prabhupada, I just don't know what I should do. I don't know what you want from me. I don't know. He was now a householder living outside. And Prabhupada says, have you not understood after all this time? Our whole movement is a service movement. It's about become, uh, becoming a servant to the spiritual master and assisting him in whatever way you can in uh, <clears throat> establishing Lord Chaitanya's uh, mercy mission for the Kali Yuga, for the fallen souls. We are all servants, and the more removed, like servant of a servant of a servant, the more um, relish there is in our activities. So there's also the example, uh, but speaking of women, there's also the example of Sita. Uh, she didn't have to go with Ram, but she insisted on going with her husband. And, you know, she, she you know, it's not like, you know, I, I have friends who, um, even a, a uh, an in-law who um, his wife thought uh, that he was going to, when he studied in college, was to become a lawyer, and then he decided that he didn't like the association of those kinds of people. He found it a very corrupt uh, profession, so he decided to be, uh, become a civil servant in the social security. And that really... Um, Changed the nature of the wife's relationship with her, with it, with with my brother-in-law, and um, <coughs> and she uh, shortly, or well not shortly, but after some time, she found a way to end the marriage. So uh, sometimes, uh, and this this may be in, in men do this also, where they're not loyal or faithful to their wives. Their wives help them achieve a certain goal, and then. Uh, when they get a little older, they get a trophy wife. That's the phrase that we use. So there's no loyalty. I, and I've mentioned this before, but I had a grand aunt. She was the sister of my <coughs> my grandmother on my mother's side, and this was even happening then in the 20th century. She was engaged to be married around 1917, and um, her betrothed went to fight. In uh, Europe in World War One, and he didn't return, and she took a vow then never to remarry or to date or anything. She became very powerful, uh, very successful uh, uh, servant of doctors, and she was many many uh, do uh, important doctors in Manhattan uh, really relied heavily on her abilities to manage their affairs. So, <clears throat> so that, that that's a nature that's there uh, for men and women to learn from. There's also the story of Vishnu Priya. Vishnu Priya, um, she was the second wife of Lord Chaitanya. And when he took uh, the renounced order of life, um, she, her vow was that every round she chanted, she could have one grain of rice. So when she finished chanting the rounds, however many rounds she chanted, that's how many grains of rice that she was allotted for that day. <clears throat> this was 
her way of following uh, her, her, her husband's example of renunciation. And so she's glorified for that. I mean, you can't imitate those kinds of things, but um, uh, you have to uh, admire it and try to learn from them that these, they're setting a certain type of example that the, what, is the real, what is the real attitude of a servant uh, and therefore, in this case, a disciple. Because discipleship is eternal. You never become equal to or greater than the spiritual master. You're always his servant. And um, so we are all followers of Srila Prabhupada. Even though he's also a spiritual, we're also spirituals, but we can, and so in one sense we're all politic we want, but he is, he is the founder of Charya, this movement, the person who Lord Chaitanya sent to spread his movement all over the world, which was predicted, and every town and village. He is obviously the person who is empowered to do that. So we, he is always our <coughs> servants, and everyone here, it's not that just because uh, some of us by birth, I happen to be born at the right time so we could take initiation from Prabhupada. Everyone is a follower of Srila Prabhupada and Iskand. Everyone should be given the same respect uh, who is dutifully following. <clears throat> but of course there is certain etiquettes on the external platform, but anyone who is serving nicely, they should be given full respect. And as devotees, we should try to practice learning to see not what bothers us about someone, but what, is, what quality they have that we admire, that I wish I had those qualities. These are, uh, uh, this is, you know, something that we, we have to train our minds on how to think uh, as a servant and, and how to um, learn. Because, because there's so many uh, opportunities, Maya gives you so many excuses why, oh, okay, I can't, I can't take this anymore, I can't work with these people. Or I can't, I can't listen to, you know, there's so many different <coughs> opportunities for the mind will present, or uh, uh, excuse me, Maya will pretend, uh, present. And if the mind isn't your friend, he'll become your enemy. You degrade yourself with your mind, or you elevate yourself with your mind. And trust me, there will be major uh, uh, situations that arise personally that, or, or, together as a community that will, or as an international society, that will test our merit, uh, test our faith. And uh, by hearing and chanting properly, by first chanting good rounds, uh, a regular number of rounds daily, and by hearing from the Shema Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita and discussing with devotees, uh, <coughs> this, uh, this is what arms us protects us from the, because uh, um, if there's, like I was saying last week, if there's just a little bit of space, Maya will find a way to get in there and separate you from, from Prabhupada or his, the association of devotees. So, um, that's uh, what I was going to speak on this verse. And today is the day, it's called, it, uh, I have it written down, it's called Akshaya Tirta, Tirti, Tirti. So on this day, it's a very important, this is a good day to start something new. Srila Prabhupada started the uh, League of Devotees on this day, um, and also, uh, let me see, there's so many things. Um, also, as I, I think I mentioned, uh, Vyasdev and Ganesh started the work on Mahabharat. They picked this day to do that. Um, there's also, um, there's, uh, well, Sudama Brahman, the day that he offered the chipped rice uh, reluctantly to Krishna was this day. On this day twice, Draupadi was saved, uh, got protection from Krishna. The first one was with the uh, incident after the gambling match and he provided extra sari and she <clears throat> after she fully surrendered to him and so um, and she wasn't uh, she wasn't exposed by the uh, the envious uh, sons of Dhritarashtra she wasn't uh, 
stripped naked in front, in front of everyone. Because no one else could actually come to our help at that point because of the, uh, the rules of the game. So, and also, there was the incident with Durvasa Muni. Uh, Durvasa Muni had six, 60,000 disciples that he traveled with. And um, if he arrived at your place, then you should, if he says we need, we're hungry and we need lunch, you should make sure you do it properly. Because otherwise, he, he's a great sage, very powerful mystic, uh, but if you didn't satisfy him, he, he was quick to um, <clears throat> uh, commit some kind of curse or something. So, and there was some arrangement made with Doryodon uh, <coughs> that, because Doryodon was trying to uh, create havoc with dirty tricks on the Pandavas in their exile. So, there were, there were, I'm not sure of all the details of it, but um, in general, what I've read in one of Prabhupada's pur purports is that the Rasamuni went and um, they, the Pandavas, had just finished eating lunch. And she, Draupadi, had just finished eating, and there was nothing. And she's really, you know, again, she's praying very sincerely to Krishna. Krishna is, appears to her, and he, she explains her dilemma. They had, uh, they had said, we'll be back, we're going to bathe in the river, and then we'll come back and we expect lunch. So Krishna said, don't worry, just go and look in the pots and see if any, this, there's got to be some small morsel. Some places it says it was a grain of rice, and some places it says it was a small piece of sock, or like a spinach or leafy vegetable. And it was just a small, tiny morsel. So she took that. She said, I, I know there's nothing. We finished everything. And he said, no, you will find something. So she did. She offered to him, him with love and devotion. He took it. He was satisfied. And then, mystically, all the disciples of uh, Durvasamuni and Durvasamuni himself felt completely full, completely satisfied. No appetite at all. So they, <laughs> the, the dilemma was resolved. Uh, also on this day um, is the day that after many, many attempts over many, many um, generations, uh, the Ganges was finally uh, brought to the, to the Earth planet. She had two conditions. Um, anyone know the two conditions? Um, one was that some, uh, someone can control my waves, the waves, and um, when anyone, a sinful person, comes in the waters of the Ganges, they'll, they deposit their sins in my waters, and I can't take all of the sins, so I need someone to, uh, you know, some way you have to figure, someone can help me carry that burden. So, and it was, uh, I believe his name is Bhagirata, something like that, Bhagirata? Bhagirata. And, yeah, was it? Bhagirata. Bhagirata, yeah. And he's a descendant of Amushman, is it? There are many, there are many generations that tried to do it, and it's a long story uh, on why he was trying to bring the Ganges because he wanted to save the souls of his uh, fallen uh, forefathers. And, um, they performed all kinds of austerities, and finally she agrees, and so he says, uh, he arranges with Lord Shiva, The Lord Shiva will control her waves and the course of the river. He says, that's why you see a picture of Shiva, and you see, you see the water coming on his head, like that. And then, um, the, uh, the other arrangement about the sins is that in, when any uh, pure devotee or holy man or woman enters the river, they will accept the the sins uh, that have been deposited re most recently. Um, so that way, she doesn't have to um, maintain all of the reactions herself. She is distributed amongst the pure devotees. So when she was satisfied by that, and then she came on this day, and also. Um, and that, I'll, I'll point out how that's very significant with another 
part of the of this what happened today. But um, there's also the um, uh, what are you going to say? Uh, this, this is the appearance of Parasurama. Parasurama is technically a Brahmin, uh, but he's a Brahmin that um, if he, you if you if he gets angry, he will wreak the you will you will see righteous anger. And uh, the it's a, again this is a kind of long I don't want to get into all of the details of it uh, and I may not get everything right. I, I don't remember everything about it. I remember from it's in the ninth can both of these stories are in the ninth canto by the way. I think Parasurama is in ninth canto chapter nine and and uh, or it, it's either way and the other is in ninth canto chapter one something like that. Um, he, Parasurama is the son of Jamandagni, and um, he became very angry uh, with his mother, actually, is how it began, um, that she was down by the river, and there was a Gandharva there, and uh, he was enjoying with Apsaras, and she just had a slight desire. And um, Parasurama understood that desire, and um, he killed her, um, along with, uh, he punished her, and uh, along with the uh, brothers. And, but John and Dagni brings, back, brings them back, uh, somehow or other. But then uh, the sons of the brothers um, were very, uh, they, were, they had vengeance in their hearts, and when Chamandagni was alone, Parasurama wasn't present, and he was in meditation on Krishna, they came in and slaughtered Chamandagni. Chamandagni ultimately was revived, and he, I forget, but he's living on some, one of the higher planets in the universe. I don't remember which one it is. And, uh, but Parasurama then uh, killed all of the Kshatriyas, and he killed all of the Kshatriyas 21 times. Prabhupada said, um, I heard in one uh, lecture, it was in London, and he says that we are, we, meaning the Europeans um, from the West, we are, we are the descendants of those Kshatriyas that we were chased out. Or maybe not Kshatriyas, maybe, but we, we were, because of Parasurama, we, we migrated through the Middle East and through Europe, and eventually here. So, um, and, and Parasurama is still, apparently, it, it stated that he's still, he's living in a, I haven't written down the name of the place, <clears throat> it's in the Himalayas, and um, he will, in the next Mambantara, the next Manu, he will um, uh, <clears throat> reappear, and he'll become a very strong preacher of Vedic knowledge. And the name of the place is uh, something like Mandaka, I don't see where it's written down. I had it written here somewhere. But uh, you can see it in the ninth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's stated there. So also, though, today is the... So this is a really, uh, really auspicious day. And um, I had an inkling it was, but thanks to uh, my godbrother, uh, Mangu Ganesh, he sent me an email that is an email for they're trying to raise funds for the TOVP, Kimayapur. And so a lot of the, uh, um, the things that I just mentioned came from that. Uh, I saw it yesterday, and uh, I was saying it's just a small purport. You know, so I was going to, oh, yeah, because I, I was going to talk about the wives of the Brahmins. That was the one I missed, yes. Uh, maybe I'll get to that at the end. So, but then I saw how important this day is. So I got. Thanks to him, I'm able to uh, share that with you. It, maybe you also have the same email, so I don't know. Um, uh, but if you don't, th th this is Chandan Yatra. Now, on one site in the, our ISKCON um, websites that give us these informations about Vaishnavas and different festivals, 
the Chandra Yatra is described as uh, Jagannath, Lord Jagannath, um, as Indradumya, the king, uh, who originally had a carved that for 21 days he wanted to have sandalwood pulp applied to his body to protect him from the heat, to cool his body. And also, this is the day in, in Puri where they begin the work on the Rath carts uh, for the next Rath Yatra. <clears throat> So, but there's another uh, story about the Chandan Yatra. And this came from a lecture that was given by Radhanath Swami in 1999 at this location. And, and the name of the place is, I have it written down, but it's in, I believe it's in South India. Um, there's a temple and it's um, run by the Ramanuja sect. Uh, let me see. And it's uh, do you do you happen to remember it? Uh, no, no, no. Anyway, um, yeah. So I don't <coughs> seem to have it written down. Probably did. So anyway, the uh, what this has to do with uh, Pallad Maharaj. Uh, Pallad Maharaj, you know, as we know, his father was. Uh, a very great atheist. And he was so powerful that um, all the demigods were serving him. Like, if I'm really hot, and if I ask someone to please, you know, turn on the fan or fan me, um, actually, uh, a running customer would just say, Vai, wind. Then he could, he could tell the demigods, I want the temperature at 20 centigrade. centigrade. They would have to serve him. He would call them out and they do it. That's how powerful he was. But, and everyone was afraid of him. But he had one person who wasn't afraid of him. There was a five year old boy, his son. His son was not afraid. Shimatito si Maharani ki. So, and if you're, if someone is a controller, <coughs> thinking they're a controller within this material universe, not realizing that the Supreme Controller is the Supreme Personality of God, and they've, and they've achieved some control within this universe, they're most fearful of someone who isn't afraid of them. Because they think this person may actually be able to conquer them and then control them. It's actually, we used to play a game when I was a kid uh, in New York called King of the Hill. Are you familiar with this game? Yeah. So, um, it's, and for those who don't know, you are, um, the, the object of the game is there's a, a, a small hill and you try to get to the top of the hill. You may work with an, uh, someone like a buddy system, but then you push that person down. You're always trying to push someone down. That's the uh, achievement. So, in other words, even if you see that sometimes people will think that they're making a uh, trying to make themselves look good by making someone else look bad, which is not e e ever going to achieve. You don't make advancement uh, by uh, trying to uh, destroy someone else's character. The, um, that isn't, the actual advancement is made by our service, uh, by developing our service attitude. So, um, Pallad Maharaj was not afraid of his father, even though all the demigods trembled uh, at the sound of his voice. So he decides, I gotta, I gotta, I, I gotta stop him now while he's only boy, because if he grows up, I'm in trouble. He'll control me, and that's not, to I can't tolerate that. And so, and his main mission is to kill Vishnu or Krishna because of what happened with his brother Haranyaksha. So. He, had, in one of the, on one of the uh, attempts to kill him, his, uh, his uh, Rakshasa uh, servants, buddies, throw Pallad off a mountain down into the uh, water, very deep, extremely deep down. And then in order to keep him down, they put a mountain down on top of him. And um, Krishna comes. He's not, he's not upset at all. Pallad's not upset. He's meditating on Krishna. He knows that, you know, 
whatever situation I'm in, Krishna is there. So Krishna comes and lifts, <coughs> lifts up the hill and saves him. And so this is a very special place. Prabhupada actually went to this place, and I'm going to read you a little uh, thing from the Lila, a little pastime of Srila Prabhupada's at this particular temple, um, uh, if I have enough time. So, um, so after the killing, after the Lord Haranyakasipu kills uh, Haranyakasipu, uh, Pallad Maharaj goes to this mountain and begins to pray to Lord Nishingadev. And he prays to him like, you are the, uh, the killer of my uncle, which was Varaha, and you are the killer of my father. Uh, and uh, I'm praying that I may able, be able to serve you. Um, in, in, you know, and I'm, I, I'm praying that you are my protector and I want to serve you. So then the Lord appears in a special form called Varaha Nishinga. You see the, the, the face of Varaha, um, like the, the boar, and then you see um, uh, the body of a human, and the nails and the claws, uh, the feet are like claws of a lion. So it's uh, part Varaha, part, and the Srinidhi is part lion, part human. So, and this deity appears. So this is a very long time ago. Um, it's either at the end of a Satya Yuga or the beginning of a Trader Yuga, and I'm not even sure if it's in this particular Yuga cycle. So, and he, after some time, the temple, he built, Pallad actually built a temple there. But after time, after many, many centuries, uh, it's lost, sort of. But the deity is still there, and it's covered over now by these anthills, big, huge anthills. But the anthills are actually protecting his body from the heat of the sun. So, um, the, uh, the, it's, this is actually in the Bhagavatam, uh, the story of Guru Rava, who was, is a descendant of very um, a powerful Vaishnava royalty. And he, um, he, uh, <coughs> He's, he's, uh, he's sort of, um, you know, kind of, it's kind of like uh, the story of uh, Manigriva and, uh, you know, the two sons of, uh, of uh, Kuvera that we sing about on, on the uh, Dhamma Dharastika. It's kind of like that. And even with the story of Nard Muni, originally he was a Gandharva, a very beautiful voice and had many uh, women followers and eventually gets cursed and he becomes the son of a maidservant gradually becomes Lord Muni. So this Purava, um, the Lord wants to uh, chastise him and uh, put him back on the right path, the straight and narrow. And while he's flying in the Vimana with uh, his girlfriend, Urvasi, um, he, a boar appears before him and then he chases after the boar but can't catch it. So then that night in a dream, um, the Lord comes to him and explains to him that I am on, I want you to find me. I'm on this hill and um, you need to um, take care of, you know, uh, take care of this temple and rebuild this temple. And um, he couldn't find it. Uh, he kept looking and looking and then another dream comes and this time the Lord says, yes, I'm over here and what, I need, what you need to do is I'm covered by anthills, and they're keeping my body cool. So what I, you need to do is uh, apply uh, chandan on my body to keep me cool. <clears throat> and so he eventually finds the, the deity, and there's, he does a special abhishek with a thousand kailashas, and the Ganga is flowing. And the Ganga heard that this particular uh, deity or this form of the Lord was going to be on this hill or mountain, Ganga made, her, uh, made sure that she flew, flowed right by him. So it kind of t it ties in with the appearance of Ganga. So um, a thousand kailasas of Ganga water and then, you know, he actually 
That's when he is, uh, gets the instruction that, look, the ants were taking, keeping my body cool. You're not keeping my body cool. You need to get chandan and apply it. And then something like 400 uh, kilos uh, were, of uh, sandalwood pulp was applied to his body. And then every year, or every couple of years, they apply another 120. And so this goes on for several centuries again, or for uh, some, quite some time. And again, it's covered over the temple. And then there's another pastime with a farmer who's extremely strong. And he hears some noise at night. And that, uh, the noise is a boar is digging up the, his agricultural fields. So he goes out and shoots it with an arrow. And it's uh, the... <clears throat> so he, he wants to finish the job and he goes chasing after it. But, oh, I know what it was. He, when he shot it, the boar went, Ra! Ra! He said, oh my God, what have I done? What, what, what kind of a boar would, would say, Ra? This must be some great devotee or maybe even God himself. So he starts to chase him, and it's at night, and he sees that he goes into a cave, but he can't find him. So he's very upset about this, and so he then, a, he's calling into the cave, please, uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't know, who are you? Who are you? And he says, you know, he explains that he is this Baraha in the string of form, and that, um, don't worry about the arrow, that didn't bother me. That's okay, just forget about it. He says, no, I can't forget about it. How can I forget about it? I shot I shot the Supreme Personality of God it. I'll have to face the Amras for this. I'll never, the rest of this life and many lifetimes after. Please tell me I can serve him. So he says, you go and get the king and uh, bring him to me. So fortunately for him, the king in that area was an extremely pious uh, Vaishnava king. And so he goes to the gatekeepers at the palace and he tells, he's just a humble farmer. And he says, I need, I have a message for the king. It's extremely important to get it to him. So the king agrees to see him. He explains the story. The mm -hmm. king goes with him. <clears throat> and, and then they, uh, both he, the king, and this farmer are given instructions by the Lord to do this um, abhishek or cleansing of the floor of this cave. And they keep pouring more and more water. At one point it's saying water. That he's, they're pouring Ganga water on it, then it somehow or other it, it merges into milk. So I'm not really sure, but it, it's water, maybe, and maybe also milk. And then all of a sudden they begin to see the top of the head. And then all of a sudden they see the whole head, then the neck, then the, the, the chest, then, you know, the legs, and then the feet. He comes out. And so that deity is kept there. And again, they're giving instructions to apply Gopi Chandan to the body. And so, I know that in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's a pastime where Lord Chaitanya goes to visit this temple, and he sang uh, Jaya Nashinga, Jaya Nashinga, Nashinga, Jaya Jaya. Um, but then also Bhakti Siddhanta went there at least once, possibly twice. 1905 and 1930, and he made sure that the footprints of Lord Chaitanya were uh, installed at this temple. At this right now, it's being taken care of of followers of the Ramanuja Sampradaya very nicely, and I'll read to you. In 1972, Prabhupada took his disciples there. Hey, yeah. It, the deity is uh, a combination of Varaha and the Shingadev. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was Pallad Maharaj's desire, because you were the killer of my uncle, you were the killer of my father, I want to you know, serve you. And so he appears as Varaha and the Shinga. And um, I, I had never heard of it before, but um, I'm very grateful to, as I said, Lama Ganesh and the TOVP for sending it out. Um, so here's, this is uh, from the Lilamrita, uh, and this was in 1972. One day, Srila Prabhupada took his disciples to see a famous temple of Lord Nishrenga, Sri uh, Singha Chalam, on the top of a hill about five miles north of Vish this is the name of the place, Vishak, Vishakha Patnam. Thousands of stone steps 
Vishakha, Vishakha Patnam. Thousands of stone steps led up the hill to the temple, which was situated in a natural amphitheater on the side of a hill. Prophet said the temple, which was now run by the followers of Ramanuja sect, was particularly important because Lord Chaitanya had visited there on his tour of South India. Srila Prabhupada chose to approach the temple by car, riding up the winding road <coughs> past orchards of mango, jackfruits, cashew, and fields of pineapple. On arriving at the temple, Srila Prabhupada and his disciples uh, met one of the temple brahmanas who showed them around the grounds. The temple buildings were of black granite and carved into the rock were the forms of, and pastimes of Vishnu, especially in his incarnation of Lord Nishinga. As, as Prabhupada moved from place to place, building to building, he sometimes rode up, step, uh, up steep stairs on a palanquin carried by four men. When Prabhupada came upon an immense banyan tree at the lower end of the temple grounds, he said that the tree must be thousands of years old. As he stood beneath the tree, his servant Nanda Kumar handed him a small chumpak flower, extending his thumb and forefather, for, forefinger from his bead bag. Prabhupada held the chumpak flower and looked fondly at it. This flower, he said, is the color of Lord Chaitanya. And this flower is the most loved of all over India. This flower is beautiful to look at and beautiful to smell. He carried the small saffron gold flower between his two fingers throughout the rest of the morning. When Prabhupada and his group entered the inner sanctum, so Prabhupada is singing a flower, but he's, not, he's singing Lord Chaitanya. The Prabhupada used to say, you should see through the eyes of Shastra, Shastra Chakshu, or see through the <coughs> eyes of philosophy. You know, like, you know, we see things philosophically. Um, when Prabhupada and his group entered the inner sanctum where the deity of Lord Nishringade resided, their guide explained that the Murti dated back to the time of Pallad Maharaj, an ancient king named Guru Rama and his consort Urvasi had once visited the, he this hill and at the request of Vasi the Murti, who appeared to her in a dream. So here it's saying, but in the Bhagavatam it says something a little different, but um, anyway, <clears throat> but it's basically the same point. So, because in, in, in the Bhagavatam I believe it says that uh, he, there was a dream to poor Varava, here it says to Vasi. The Lord had ordained that he should be worshipped in this place, but had he would give darshan only one day a year during the month of Vai, Vaishaka. The rest of the year he would be entirely covered with ground sandwood pulp mixed with camphor and other scents. Therefore, the deity now appeared to be only a lump covered with a layer of sandalwood. Prabhupada commented that the sandalwood was to keep the deity cool-headed. What machine if you don't want to get so, this is now one of uh, Prabhupada's disciples, uh, Madhavananda. When Prabhupada was at the Nishinga temple in Vishak, Vishak Patnam, he, it was the same as when he was in Vrindavan. When he got out of the car, he was very grave. He went into the temple and there was a chamber. Then he went down. The walls were four feet thick and it seemed like hundreds of feet of tunnels before we got into the inner sanctum. There was the deity uh, with just a mound of sandwood paste on him. As soon as we entered, Prabhupada said, begin chanting the Nishinga mantra. So we started singing, Tava Kala Kamalam Varina Abhuta And we circumambulated the deity. Then we stood before the deity and Pallad offered obeisances. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> Prabhupada offered obeisances. I'm sure Prabhupada would have also and, uh, he may have even been there in some other dimension. Guru Kripa uh, now speaks. When we came into the deity room, Prabhupada had us sing the Nishinga prayers. He always manifested such devotion. That was what separated him from us. Not only his learning or his knowledge, but his devotion. That's the point of the service. You know, 
It's done with devotion, you know, like when we're chanting, with devotion. We're here with devotion. We're praying with devotion. That's, that's the mood. You can mechanically do something. The, the, the devotion, like this is the story of, I always think of uh, uh, um, Chandramali Swami now. He, he was making this para, and Prabhupada was at New Vrindavan, and he burnt it. And so he was very upset. And then, but he was making it very seriously, trying to, you know, really meditating. This is for Prabhupada. And, but he, he accidentally burnt it. And then, so he decided to make some more. And he walked out of the room. And then when he came back, the burnt para was gone. And he was really sweating bullets. This is, oh my God, no. He took the burnt para to Prabhupada. And then the next day, or later that day, Kirtanam, <coughs> he never went, to, he was at the old Vrindavan, you know, you know, in New Vrindavan, it's a place called Old Vrindavan, it's the original farm. And he never came up there, and he said, who made that para? And, and Chandran said, I did, I'm sorry. He said, no, Prabhupada ate every bit of it. He said, it was the best para he ever tasted. <laughs> But it was filled with devotion. He's tasted the devotion. And then it reminds me of another story, Ray And uh, you know, at that time he was a big college preacher, so now I see. The day before he had gone in with a report talking about his preaching programs and Papa was very enthusiastic. The next day he just comes in and figures I'm a big devotee, I'm gonna this is his words, not mine. Uh, and I'm just gonna, you know, be here with Prabhupada. Uh, but then he, he began, Prabhupada was ignoring him. <clears throat> The problem was fixed on this Pamadaji, who was, uh, you know, cleaning things and uh, making some uh, vases, flower arrangements. The problem was just really observing her service and said, "Thank you for your devotion. Thank you for your service." And Trinandan says, "I learned a lot that day. That it's not just about what position I am or I'm this title or that person. You know, I'm a big devotee." No, it's probably we're seeing the devotion. I mean, there are devotees that we don't even know their names. Like, there's a devotee by the name of Dharma in Miami. He has been there since uh, through. And you let me get this mm -hmm. He's been there through every. And Miami has had more temples than, you know, than you know, some of us had had wives or. <laughs> no. <they, laughs> um, uh, shoes, yes, much more, more shoes, and he, um, but he, he's, Dharma stayed there throughout everything, and then the, all the stories of J Jayananda, always, if you, he, when he was the president, in, I think in San Francisco or Berkeley, his office was the kitchen sink, because he was washing pots all the time. If you wanted to talk to the temple president, go to the kitchen sink, and grab a sponge and help with the pots. Um, you know, that mood of service, not what my title is, what my position is, but what is the service that we, attitude that we have developed, and then, then you, I mean, I don't, I, I haven't achieved this, I can only, you know, repeat what I, I've read and understood, you know, uh, you know, I, I've been trying for almost, you know, five decades, and I'm just a little shy of that, and, um, and I, I, I'm still far away. But this is the, 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 the move. So let me just finish with this point. In these places, we would see him become very silent, very grave. And when he spoke, when, when he speak, I don't think this is not probably, probably maybe it's, when he would, oh, here it is. When he would speak, such peace would fill us from within. When he would speak, you could feel it. He was constantly convincing us of Krishna consciousness. Not purposefully, but he was just being himself. In these places, it would come out. When Prabhupada stood with us before the deity, we couldn't even see. There was just a mound of sandalwood. There was one Brahmin with big earlobes. He had a ring in his ear. We offered some money, but it was a very devotional time. Prabhupada didn't say much. And the main reason was that these places are appreciated according to one's spiritual advancement. The details and facts in the history are not really that important. 
There is nothing really to say. Prabhupada would just make sure we had the proper respect and didn't commit any offense. So then that night, Prabhupada lectured in the evening, sometimes speaking uh, at schools and, and, um, and social clubs in this particular area. And, uh, but so that's, that's, that's his pastime at the temple. And so we want the, uh, I, I guess it's not necessary for me to mention about the what. What time is it? We're over time. Yeah, so. I had an idea to start a program that would take 26 weeks. And that we, uh, um, and I was going to try to initiate it today. And I was going to be one quality of a uh, devotee, a Vaisnava. Yeah, that's a good thing. So if it's alright with you, if anyone has to go, we can go. But I, and hopefully I pray to Prabhupada and to the uh, to Mohitananda, to Chaitanya Bharati, and, and Krishna, and all the assembled devotees, that I'll have the health and uh, steadiness to do this all the way straight through. If not, someone else can, you know, do it on that the next week. And at the end of 26 weeks, we'll all be pure devotees. <laughs> so um, the first quality um, is uh, a devotee is merciful. It's just like a short little statement or analysis of this by Satyarup Maharaj. Lord Kapila, in his teachings to Mother Devahuti, discusses mercifulness as one of the symptoms of a sadhu. Prabhupada comments, he, the Vaishnava, is merciful because he is the well-wisher of all living entities. He is not only a well-wisher of human society, but a well-wisher of the animal society as well. It is said here, Sarva Dehina which indicates all living entities who have accepted material bodies. Not only does the human being have a material body, but other living beings such as cats uh, and dogs. And also, oh, they also have material bodies. The devotee of the Lord is merciful to everyone. The cat, 